to tell you that you do not need the OGL, you do not need Dungeons and Dragons at all. You don't. You certainly don't need five five E or anything like that, and um, you're going to be fine, especially if you just want to DM or I need to say GM now because that's uh, the neutral term. If you just want to to uh, GM a session with your friends and you can use any material you want, maybe you even make everything up yourself. You don't need anything. This this does not concern you. You don't need Wizards of the Coast. You don't need Paizo. You don't need anything. So you can just game. And that's something that has been lost a little bit in the general discussion because people act like um, oh, uh, WotC is is uh, holding uh, gaming content hostage and to a degree that is true but what's debatable is whether you actually need that content or not and in a lot of cases you don't I have been uh, running homebrew sessions for I don't know since since I was a child basically it's um and it's always been this way in my uh, friend group we always ran more homebrew content than pre-made content and uh, when I say homebrew content that does not mean like oh uh, this encounter has like a, a an extra orc or some something like that that means like basically doing everything from scratch and you don't need uh, to do a lot to uh, to make this happen so what i want to um to go over with you is uh, how to do that so for example if we wanted to um to just play something with our friends right and let's say you you have a story in mind that you want to play for example let's make it classic right for example let's um Let's go with the Odyssey or something. This is this is the Odyssey, one of the uh, oldest adventure stories that we know, and um, you might want to play that. So how would we um, how would we go about doing this? You basically you have a story, right? You you are friends said you should GM that, and how how are we going to do this? We see okay, um, this is this is a uh, ancient. Greek uh, history um, with like a fantasy setting um, set mostly in in uh, in, in that uh, cultural area. So we um, we actually have a kind of few associations uh, what we want this to, to look like. And um, there's a story there. There are heroes that um, we want the players to implement, right? And uh, then uh, we we could just basically run that whole story as a campaign and how would we do that if we don't want to use d20 or something or if we don't want to buy one of the hundred thousand ogl things uh, or or even official what's the content right if we don't want to do that how how do we go about that and i'm kind of shocked that a lot of people never consider this. They they say, okay, I, I want to um, to run the Odyssey, right? And how um, how how will I do that? I just purchase something, and you don't need that. You can just run that as it is from from scratch. It's not even that complicated. I personally, I'm a huge fan of like custom systems, and uh, this is the one I. Uh, I use a lot and uh, that is my d10 system and it's basically a um, a minimal role set for like playing anything but uh, that's not what we are going to do today let's let's open up a room for this let's call it after hydro uh, odyssey or something yeah who cares so um this is gonna be uh, our dice room for for the game and uh Let's uh, let's make a quick rule rule do rules document so um, yeah we know what's what's up. One thing we probably should take into account is um, what we need to do, right? So this is gonna be a hero-based story uh, setting. It will have a lot of combat, I guess, a little bit of puzzle solving, and the rest is gonna be a player 
to NSC NPC and interaction and everything. So that's um, that's not even touched by the rules at all, right? So what do we need our rules to do here? And looking at those stories, we have for, for the Odyssey specifically, we have a set of adventurers, like a small group, and um, they have like their individual strengths, right? It's it's probably going to be very very classic. So you um, you would have you would probably have some attributes that are like physical background of the uh, of the character. You're gonna have a few skills and maybe a few special abilities. Although we we actually don't really need that. We could just get by with skills all the way down. And we probably don't need, even need to go overboard with that, right? What would a typical hero-based system look like, right? We have attributes. And what, what attributes do we need? We uh, should probably... Uh, strength should feature prominently. And let's say... Yeah, I, I don't want to make it too, um, too D&D-like. So <laughs> let's... Uh, Let's say strength is a, is a thing, right? Yeah, a dexterity. Um, I don't know. I'm. I'm. Maybe we can find other attributes that should be uh, should factor in here. Right? Uh, intelligence. I don't know if intelligence is a good skill to um, to actually capture what's going on here. Most of the time, what what people mean uh, by that is like I don't know uh, wit. Or uh, like problem-solving ability, like uh, ability to improvise and, and understand, or something like that. That could be um, let's let's call it wit. Why not? So that's like uh, your mental ability, right? And if we think about the Odyssey specifically, this is also an instance where uh, something like mental uh, resistance or something might feature, right? Because for example, when they encountered the sirens, they uh, had like uh, yeah some effect on on the, like the mentally weak uh, heroes in that story. So we should probably have like uh, what what are we going to to um, to name that? I don't know. Let's let's call it like, I don't know. Let's call it resistance, right? Yeah, general resistance. Yeah. Uh, we we can um, roll this for anything. This is actually kind of neat. We decided what we want. That's gonna be these uh, four attributes, right? And um, so, what else do we need? Uh, we're not gonna spec these out yet. What we're going to do is decide on a system uh, to to make dice rolls with. In theory, you could have a system without any die rolls, right? But let's let's go the traditional route, and yeah, define how dice rolls should work. And I already called this the octahedral odyssey, so it would make sense with this odyssey theme to um, to just choose a d8, right? To do anything, everything um, everything happens with a d8. What does that mean? So. What you need uh, is a granular way to control whether dice rolls were successful or not. And uh, sometimes you need to figure out how successful. One of the most basic things you can think of is when you want to see if you're strong enough for something, for example, you could just uh, roll a d8, right? And uh, to somehow factor in how strong your character is, you could you could add that to the D8 roll. For example, let's say your character has a strength of two, and uh, that means for every roll that features strength, they get to add two. So when you make a uh, how do we want to call that? Can hear myself talking by the way. Yeah, if you, if you want to make a roll, you can just you can just uh, roll a d d8 um, and add your thing. 
how what do we want to call this when you make a uh, make a check let's call that a check when you make a check you uh, roll a d8 uh, and add uh, your modifier right and that's basically it and your modifiers are your modifiers are uh, one applicable attribute for example if you want to check your strength you add strength one plus one uh, applicable skill and we're going to talk about skills soon uh, plus um, circumstantial modifiers maybe let's figure out what those are going to be later. So, for example, to um, to roll a strength check, you would just do that. Check you for for a strength check. You would take a d8 and add for strength check with a. Um, um, to roll a strength check uh, with a character can't type to that that has strength two you would take uh, you would roll a d8 and r2 and um, we can even make a helpful button for this so, um, I think this is the uh, the button code, right? And uh, for example, let's let's do that. And so this is what happens when you roll, right? That's quite nice. And you can totally the the the, the amount of um, RPG situations you can do with this is, is basically everything you need. That's yeah. You you don't need any more. We have to find uh, how um, skilled checks work and uh, that's basically it uh, so for example if if uh, Odysseus wants to resist the call of a siren for example they uh, could just I don't know let's say Odysseus has like a resistance of four right he's he's like the hero could roll like a d8 plus four uh, we probably should define what these roles mean in, in detail but yeah that's uh, that's a nine that's probably going to be pretty good and uh, now that we know the uh, the die we are going to use right we can define uh, what the attributes mean they should probably after we list them they should probably um, range from I don't know for humans right for for normal humans uh, range from zero to eight that is quite a nice i think range and that still means uh, that if we have a monster that could easily have more um but normal humans like keep it from from zero to eight and when you make a character those characters when they start out in the odyssey and um, they are already heroes some of them are like children of the gods and, and stuff like that so um let's give them a little bit more than a typical uh, D, D hero would get right let's have a section on how to make characters making a character making a character so when you make a character um, should probably uh, have eight points to divide uh, among as you see fit let's uh, let's call it distribute um, eight attribute points eight points between your attributes To not make it too one-sided, let's say don't uh, give more than four points to one single attributes. I don't know. 
four points to a single attribute. So that um, means um, we can we can already make a character like this. For example, consider Odysseus, right? Odysseus, I I think. Oh, yeah, right. Odysseus. So Odysseus would have like like this pretty. So Odysseus would have like a strength and dex with and res. Odysseus, I guess, is pretty strong. Let's make it three. Reasonably dexterous and witty. So uh, that leaves one point of resistance. That's not. I don't know. Maybe we should lower dex and wit and optimize resistance. Yeah, I think. We're making a, a character called Odysseus. Right, so this uh, this is um, our starting character. Let's uh, let's save it here, uh, and with this character we can already do a lot, right? What we need to um, to define is when is a role a success or not, and uh, the way, um, for example, D and D does this is by checking against a difficulty, and uh, that's in in D and D terms. It's it's called a DC. Uh, I think that's what Pathfinder calls it as well. We are not going to do that because that term is copyrighted. So yeah, we probably don't want that. So let's um, let's call that something else. Let's call it just the, the difficulty rating. How do we want to formulate this uh, like to decide whether whether a role was successful? Um, Compare it. Uh, compare the result to the difficulty. Let's just call it difficulty. I guess. Yeah. So, what do we want the difficulty to be, right? For like an easy task. For, for like, let's say for a normal task. For a normal task, let's have a. Uh, a let's have like a little table or something. I think it was like this, with, like with this symbol, right? Let's call that raw, and let's say uh, the associated difficulty is this. So, let's say it's going to be an easy raw, right? The difficulty for this should probably be, I think, 4. So we we need to, um, to reach at least 4 points by making this raw. That seems reasonable, and uh, like a medium thing, I don't know. Medium, medium thing could be eight, right? And a hard thing could be twelve. Is that reasonable? So um, that means um, if you're not skilled in anything, you can't ever do a hard thing. Hmm, don't know. There would be a superhuman category that could be 12, so you can't ever reach this. If you if you don't have like strength 4, you can never reach a 12. I don't know if this is reasonable or not. Don't know. If we say hard, you can't you can't do hard without uh, having at least two uh, in that category. And so that means medium would be would be eight, and easy would be six. That means half of the rolls. Uh, that's more than half. That's like one fourth of the rolls will succeed. That's not a lot. Let's keep it at that. I don't like how these are spaced. So um. If we did it like this, I don't know. Do we think this is appropriate or not? Let's let's roll with that. So 
Uh, this is our little table here, uh, 4, 8, 12, and 16. This is our difficulty uh, uh, ratings. Yeah, let's let's do that. Yeah. So we um, we now have a scale, right? And in in combat, we probably want to compare that against what another character has. In combat, you uh, and your opponent make a, a what do we want to call this an opposed check for example you roll your relevant check and the opponent rolls their counter whoever if you score more than your opponent, you win. So, for example, for example, you want, um, for example, you want to. You want to hit someone in a brawl? I can't really write and talk at the same time. Someone in a brawl. You check, you roll a check against, uh, uh, check with your, your strength plus your, uh, let's call it, melee skill um, I don't know if you roll if, if you reach uh, if you reach a higher outcome than your opponent with their melee roll check um, you uh, inflict some damage and what that means is, uh, we can always define this later, right? So, uh, probably should talk about skills first. We already have a working set here, right? We have attributes, we have um, kind of a scale what these attributes mean. We uh, have a means of checking against these attributes for success or failure. And uh, what we kind of need to do to make this a little bit more like rich is having skills skills are uh, well they are skills they are like um abilities and competencies i guess a character has there are basically i think two classes of skills that we need to consider here um one would be the um the combat or like uh, i don't know trade skills of the character and the other would be like the non-combat like knowledge based skills and everything that we can check against like so oh you you make an observation role or something like that so that should probably feature in there. I think every character has uh, the following, I don't know, <laughs> no, let's, let's say um, we have classes, right, or we have like a uh, trade skills. The following, the following are like trade skills or adventuring skills. Let's call them trade skills. Melee combat. Let's make it a list, right? Um, melee combat. Ranged combat. What else? The Odyssey, right? What else do we need? What kind of um, trade skills did the uh, the uh, heroes of the Odysseys have? 
Hmm, I guess... I don't know. Is magic a trade skill? Maybe, right? If you wanted to do that? If, if, if you wanted to, um, to play a mage or something? That should probably totally be a thing. Yeah. I guess like disarming traps and open locks like typical thief thing, right? Um, motivate and command like for a leader, for example, that would be um, uh, that would be a useful skill, I guess. Um, what else? These five, maybe? This would be like our core skills. So um, these are the trade skills, right? The character can have um, uh, can have uh, any number of other skills. Uh, let the players invent freely. So that would be the first thing that you would not do in a fully fleshed out setting or like system but in this case it's totally fine right if um you can say okay, okay player you want to um to be a like a healer or someone who knows all the myths and legends or something like that and then you can just let them add it whatever fits into the setting you can just um yeah allow them to do that and when the time comes uh, to to actually um, make checks based on that, they will they will volunteer that information. That's the non-trade skills, right? The standard skills and the trade skills. All right. And when we make a character, what we want to do is pick two, right? Pick two trade skills should probably uh, capitalize them to make sure everybody knows those are like standard things, right? Pick two trade skills. Distribute. How much do we want to give them? Give them, I don't know, maybe four points between them. And that would basically be your class, right? Uh, after that, can um, pick any number of other, can invent, specify, invent any number of other skills and distribute like eight points between them, right? Eight points between them. Okay. So that's pretty reasonable, right? Um, so if if you had if if this was like a D and D session, right? Um, a D and D system uh, kind of thing, you would say, okay, that there's like a melee c fighter with some magic ability, or um, like a pure combat type. Should we have a defense skill? I wonder. I don't know. Or like um, you have, you want to play like a thief type, right? That would be um, like a disarm thing and ranged combat thing. Or if you wanted to to uh, make this Odysseus character, he would probably have like melee and motivate, right? And those two, whatever you choose, um, will be your class. And that would basically cover everything we need. And you can then, like, with these other eight points, um, like, flesh out the concept a little bit. So, um, for example, for our hero Odysseus, we uh, want um, melee, um, we want him to be a fighter and leader. So, we pick melee combat and motivate command. And uh, the result would be 
let's insert this as code like melee uh, combat and we have four points let's divide them evenly melee combat plus two and motivate command is also gonna be plus two and then after that let's have some generic skills we have eight points um what can odysseus do he probably knows a little bit about uh legends knowledge about legends um let's give him plus three for that maybe commas would be nice here knowledge about legends would be plus three i don't know um like escape artist no um what what can he do um see odysseus did he have any special abilities descriptions um he was tough crafty cheerful medium height eloquent and wise so eloquent is a good non-combat skill to have that would be um i don't know talking social social interactions let's call that social interactions plus two plus three let's say plus three right um that covers eloquent cheerful crafty crafty is probably something like engineering or something like improvising um, with materials right so we have we had eight points to divide it is basically it he knows his legends he can interact socially and he can improvise with um stuff so does that cover what he can do i think so right he doesn't have any special abilities just has like this fate thing and that's basically it right yep that's fine so oh i th i think this doesn't do line breaks that does it now let's find another way to to write this like maybe a quote block quote how does that look that looks fine except maybe not how about this does this work can i can i indent this nope i cannot so uh, what are we going to do um let's uh, just wrap this in there's no indentation right code raw horizontal divider no so yeah let's wrap that in code segments whatever doesn't matter we should probably standardize capitalization so that would be melee combat ranged combat magic disarm traps motivate combat right this uh, would basically be whatever we need to make a odysseus type character okay um so what can our rule system do at this point we can make a character and i'd say this is a pretty decent like class excuse for a class system and we can make specializations and add a little bit of flavor and uh, that's that's a valid character there are things that are missing though for example how much damage can a character actually take before they keel over right that would be a thing that uh, that sounds like an important skill to have so we should probably specify that so there, there are different types of like hit point systems that we could choose for this um for example we could make it so um damage occurs to the attributes i think numenera does this right you have like your attributes and when you take damage um you you subtract that from your attributes maybe so that would be one thing for example so if if odysseus takes damage like the, the player gets to decide what attributes to kind of reduce 
Okay, we should maybe just do something else here. Let's have another attribute. Now let's... Mm, I'm kind of undecided about this. Uh, skills... I don't know. Let's call that hit points and let, let's like make it traditional, right? Uh, let's have hit points. Should we do that? Yeah, let's let's do that. So um, hit points, hit points indicate uh, indicate how much damage a character can take. So hit points indicate how much damage a character can take. Uh, initially. Uh, uh, humans, humans usually uh, have between like four and eight. That means that's another thing we can do when we make a character. Uh, let's say uh, your character starts out with eight hit points. Right. And um, you you could argue like what uh, what about like uh, weak characters or something like um, what about wizards or, or stuff like that? But I think what we're going to do is we're going to start everybody out with eight hit points, right? When you take damage, you get to um, lower that damage by your resistance. A like glass cannon would be possible to build with this, or a little, I don't know, very tough character would be possible to build with this. So that's uh, that's the thing about the hit points. Um, when uh, when you take damage, uh, when a character. Uh, takes damage, takes damage. That damage is first reduced by, let's say, armor. The resistance attribute and the resistance attribute, the remainder, remainder, if any, is subtracted, is temporarily, temporarily, Subtracted from the HP. Subtracted is not a word, right? <clears throat> Subtracted from the HP. Uh, if a character's HP falls to zero, they die. Bam. Simple. All right. That works. Alright, um, what else? Uh, do we need anything else? I don't think so. So we can do... Basically, we. this is a complete system now. We have like attributes that denote the, um, the overall like uh, physical makeup of the character. We can do dice rolls, we can do opposed checks. We just need to define how much damage an attack does. Um, but uh, that's kind of a minor point at this stage. We have like core skills that make our, like the trade skills that make our uh, class system. We have hit points that uh, denote character status is. And we know how to make a character. Alright, um, so let's talk about damage a little bit more. Uh, let's have a uh, damage section. Physical attacks like um, cause damage. Again, there are multiple ways we might do this. For example, if we say, okay, um, an attack roll, an attack roll already features the strength attribute, for example, we could just say, okay, our opposed check that we made, whatever remains 
is the damage. That's probably good, right? Pass damage. Uh, so, if we make an opposed check, the only question that that remains here, for example, in melee combat, that's pretty obvious. Like, for example, if you have a sword, right? And uh, the sword, like, let's say that does like four damage extra or whatever, and you add that on top of your attack roll. And the opponent makes an, an opposed check, and um, let's say like six points remain, right? And you, you subtract your armor and your resistance from that, and after that you have three points left, and that's the damage you take. That totally works. However, what are you going to do with ranged combat? Um, do you roll against ranged combat with dexterity? Maybe. What do you roll against with, with magic? That could be wit, right? I think that works quite well. Let's, let's make a little table that uh, kind of defines this. For example, if you have an attack type that's uh, attack uh, with attribute, attack, skill, oppose, defense skill, defense attribute, uh, defense skill. I don't know. Something like that, maybe. And basically for the attack type, like let's say melee, right? You attack with attribute strength. And you attack with the melee skill. Melee combat. And you defend with strength. You defend with melee combat. Does that work? I think that totally works. And we do the same with ranged. Ranged. Only that's dex based. So ranged combat. And you defend with dex. And maybe... Is there a defense skill? Like dodge. <laughs> should we have... Should we make that a trade skill? Like dodge? Yeah, let's, let's make that a trade skill. So that, I think, works quite well. And for magic, um, we are going to have the uh, attack attribute would be, I guess, wit. Wit, magic, would be the skill. And you defend against that with your wit. And I don't know, should we, should we also use dodge or magic maybe so you can either let's say you you can either like duck and escape or you can like use counter magic or whatever magic or dodge to defend against magic and if you don't have these um that's fine that's still like just a zero to your to your role right that doesn't mean you're completely uh, defenseless against this. Yeah, that works quite well. Um, I wish I would remember how to do these tables, but th there's a way to make this like bold, I guess. Does that work? No, I'm not looking up the documentation, no. It's either, either I guess it right or I don't. I'm not reading the manual. Yep, that totally worked. So, um, that's actually pretty good. That uh, kind of, yeah. Um, so about damage. If um, any um, if any points are left over after the uh, attack roll. After the, the attack check, let's call it attack check. Yep. If any points are left over after the attack check, 
you um that's the damage and we can um just transfer this down here uh so weapons um and spells and damaging spells have damage uh, have a damage bonus that uh, gets added to the attack check and we can define a few um, <clears throat> i'm sorry Ugh. and we can define a few of them right um so so weapon damage bonus and maybe something a, a comment or something right so Let's say I have a fist. The damage bonus of this is zero. Comment? I don't know. I don't think we have a comment about this, right? Let's say we have a kick and that is like... For example, let's say a kick gives you a damage bonus of two. You, um... Your... Res is... Effectively... One, let's say minus one to raise for this round, right? After you have kicked uh, someone, you are kind of vulnerable. All right, that is totally acceptable. The next thing would be like a knife, for example, and uh, yeah, you can totally like kill someone with a knife, I guess. Um, so let's give that plus four. Or maybe we do plus three and you get two attacks. You can attack twice per round. And uh, the next one would be, yeah, I think that's that's probably good. You can you can knife a lot per, per round, right? But then you you move uh. uh to more professional weapons maybe maybe we leave it at plus two right and let's say i have a, a dagger dagger would be um, more substantial than a knife and that uh, gets you the the normal amount of attacks and that's like sort of the baseline and uh short sword is probably popular at the time let's give that a bonus of six um and uh, you need need uh, i don't know strength of two or more to do that i guess let's say uh, weapons of ancient greece what did we have here spear xiphos short and deadly that is kind of a short sword. Let's make it atmospheric and add that Xiphos. So a spear, right? Um, spear. Um, so spear is pretty good. Let's uh, let's give it the same damage bonus as a dagger, because that's basically a dagger on a stick, right? Uh, what's special about the spear um, has a range of two meters, but ca can't attack close targets. Can't attack close targets. I don't know. Someone who's standing right before you, right? You can't use a spear for that. So what else do we have? Copis. Mm, yeah. That's a heavy knife with a curved blade. It has a single edge. Okay, uh, does that fit in here? Let's say... Okay, that's that's what we call the dagger, right? Uh, in, in normal, like D&D parlance, that's, that's like the Greek variant. Um, do we need more? Uh, we 
should probably talk about an arrow. If we can manage to spell it correctly. Um, an arrow is pretty deadly. Let's give it plus four. But we, uh, we should probably reduce the damage the further the target is away. So minus one uh, damage per 10 meters of distance. Seems fine. Right. Yep. So that that uh, already limits the bow, which is quite nice. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, of course, you could make an argument like that using a bow is, is more like um, a strength-based thing than a dexterity thing. Let's not get too detailed about this. What else do we need? We have a javelin, which is kind of like a spear, right? Ah, uh, let's call it a day. Whatever. This is just gonna be an example. So, this uh, already tells us something about the weapons. So that leaves us with um, basically everything we need to do to GM a basic setting. That's all the rule set we need to do. And um, we uh, it, it took like an hour to come up with this and most of this hour was talking. And you can totally do a campaign with that. When you do a campaign, right, what would you, what would you need to add to this? Uh, you would probably uh, need to talk about experience. So, for example, the, the GM uh, uh, gives out uh, experience at the end of a session. Usually, let's call it, I don't know, usually like about four points. Right? De depending on what you, you manage to do in that session, you get like, I don't know, six points if you if you did something great and like three points if it was like meh and like four points if it's like average, that should be fine. What are you going to do with these points, right? So one model would be you, you use that to increase your, your scores. Um, players can then use these points to increase uh, their scores. Uh, to increase an attribute um, by one, spend... Let's have a table. We did tables for that uh, above. Like score to increase um, how much it costs. For example, if I have an attribute that costs a uh, um, new value two times, I guess, that would be fine, right? Two times the new value? That seems reasonable to me. Yeah. So if I want to increase my hit points, that's um, that should probably cost like uh, the new score. And the same goes for skills. Oh, the core skills, the, the trade skills. That's also gonna be double. And like the normal skills. That's like... Like this, right? I think that's fine. Because uh, it's like maybe an epic campaign and then you can you can like invest a little bit more for for things that are like often used, right? And that are very useful. Yep, that sounds about right. Uh, so, uh, what else? What else? That's everything you need to um, to run a campaign. 
It's certainly enough to run a single session. Um, did I miss anything? So we, we did design a, um, a complete RPG system for that. And uh, if you had, uh, if you have like an NPC, right, you can, uh, you can create them as if they were a character. You, you might make them a little bit weaker because you're making heroes here, right? It's the Odyssey. Um, so you would like maybe uh, give them half the points or whatever that you would a normal character. And what exactly magic means you could define on like a spontaneous basis. Like, um, I think most of the magic stuff in the Odyssey is relatively tight, but uh, I, I think there would be no reason why there shouldn't be like D&D &D level magic as well. Like, how, how far you want to go is like up to you at that point. So yeah, that, that should be fine. Uh, and if, if you wanted to create a monster, um, that should obviously have more points and maybe some weird special abilities. The one thing you could say about the magic attribute, right? Uh, about the magic skill. So we have our skills here. We could say that for every point of magic trait skill, you get to choose a spell and that spell is treated like like a normal skill. But that makes stuff pretty complicated. Um, let's just say you know a number, you can cast a number of spells equal to this skill value. Right? And when you cast that, you use the, uh, the magic thing and uh, that's gonna be fine. Yep. So we got. And, oh, while we are at this, we can totally specialize, uh, specialize this. Uh, for example, melee, let's make this a table. I kind of love tables now. So, um, for melee combat, right? Um, uh, you are an expert uh, in a number of weapons equal to this skill value um, giving you plus one a plus one bonus when using such a weapon that's melee weapon of course and then let's turn around and do the same for ranged like ranged Weapons, it's also plus one for every one you are specialized in. And then we can do the same for magic. Do we uh, do we want to dis disarm better? Then you can, um, you are, let's, let's go with this like formulation, right? You are an expert at a number of devices. equal to this skill value giving you a plus one bonus against such a device and uh, with the motivate command we can say um, you uh, can motivate command a number of Equal equal to this skill value. Your skill value and dodge. That would be um, you are an expert at dodging a number of weapons and war spells equal to the skill value giving you a plus one bonus when dodging when dodging uh, such an attack right 
and that immediately makes everything a little bit better because you can now specialize. That's, that gives players one more thing they can do. So let's label this correctly. Um, the following are trade skills. Um, it's gonna be an H3 and uh, trade skills. Other skills. Right. Right. Great skills, other skills, that already works quite well. We have hit points, we have damage, we can make a character, and we can hand out experience. We um, we are basically done. That's all you need to do. And um, okay, we are like at 1 hour 20 or something at this point, but it uh, doesn't matter, right? Um, because most of my time was spent like uh, hemming and hawing and explaining um, my choices here um, but this should illustrate how easy it is to make a role-playing system with that and um, that's that's all you need to do that's that's it um, and you don't need any fancy licensed kind of IP for that you can just make a document like this heck you you can make this same document you can just copy this and it'll be fine it that is totally enough uh, to run a session with your friends and and that session can be anything you want so no you don't need to license stuff you don't need to buy books you can just play Thank you for watching and uh, yeah, it's obvious that I need to do more of these. So uh, yeah, expect more updates and I, I sincerely hope I can improve my skill in doing these. But um, hey, who knows? Uh, this was the first one. I need to like get into the rhythm of doing these. Yeah, thank you for tuning in and uh, hopefully the next one will be better.